So you might have noticed that, as of late, I can be a bit of a troll with some people. And you might have been wondering about one audio clip I once used. Take this jukebox, <laughs> fuck this kid. I bet someone was wondering where that was from. Well, it comes from a bit of nostalgia that I grew up with on YouTube. You ever had a series of videos that was the shit back in the olden days? Well, I remember coming back to some videos and getting to see re-uploads of videos that were previously deleted of one series. I realized it was even better than I remembered it in some ways. Also, this is going to be a little chronologically out of order since I kind of just categorized these based on how they were sorted in post. So if some of these are a little bit, you know, timed wrong, sorry about that. So I'm here to make a video tribute to the days of old, and I'm going to tell you the tale of Team Avalition's videos. Would you believe me if I told you that these were some of the best damn Minecraft griefers on the block? Actually, I know what you might be thinking. You aren't gonna credit a bunch of dudes for wrecking kids' houses in Minecraft, are ya? Come on. And they hacked too while they were at it? The fuck? Well, here's the thing. Even if you weren't big on Minecraft in its prime, or you see this griefing as... questionable, it's still fascinating to study the history of the crew. Hell, the entire video series taught me things about the condition of the game itself when I rewatched it. It was a timepiece about that, their music tastes, the jokes people made at the time. Once again, it shows a lot. You know that giant of a game Microsoft bought out and made shit tons of merch for? Minecraft, the game that spawns some Telltale titles? You know, that one game that sculpted the game design of sandbox titles for years to come. Well, this was once a bumpkin indie title that was available for purchase in Alpha and Beta. This is a game in which anyone could sculpt the landscapes they could walk to with a pickaxe by default. Anyone. And by the time this game was in Beta, third-party plugins to fix the game were fairly rudimentary. Also, this game had some bad instances of spaghetti code, even without the plugins. To put this in perspective, one escapade by AVO had the crew managing to easily duplicate a nearly infinite supply of diamond blocks. That's one of the most valuable materials in the game. And by easily do so, I mean that they did it on complete accident in a fresh unaltered vanilla server. That's what these guys had to work with. But trust me when I say, they made the most of it. If you want to see how far this journey went, we gotta go back to some of their first antics in 2011. This was with the Space Monkey server. This was back when they made good use out of the most basic griefing tools possible. Their strong start to griefing included turning a tower by a guy named Dell into Bowser's fucking castle, and then blazing it with a wooden fort that represented our trees. You know, Reddit's thread on trees, now. And in these two episodes, they demonstrated the most important rule of their whole time griefing. Like an introduction to a good book, this set the stage for years to come. And no, it wasn't don't build your house out of wood. Most players learn to do that on their own. Rule one of AVO griefing is, if direct damage to the game isn't enough, try social engineering. The crazy thing about Dell's tower back there is that they actually played dumb when people found the destruction and they helped rebuild it using the recording as a reference. So when the server needed a new admin to stop the griefing, the main guy, Storm Surge, used his good reputation to be voted into moderator status. A griefer being elected to stop griefing is pretty great, but it gets better. When the Archery's fort burned down, they managed to avoid getting blamed and saw the blame get shifted to another user that wasn't even online then. And afterwards, the guy behind the tree fort got so mad that he went off griefing Dell's tower again and wreaking havoc before he got banned. All of this, and AVO got away with it. See, this is the good shit we're in for, ladies and gents. And Space Monkey didn't end there. Not only did they make the Cobble Cloud, a cobblestone aerial leviathan that ushered forth apocalyptic flooding, but they pulled the all in. We're talking making the spawn point into a fire-ridden land of perpetual death, exploding stone walls in another tower with metric shit tons of dynamite, and burning down another wooden house saying, the fires of hate will never outshine hope. Well, that statement doesn't work too well if you're still building your houses out of wood. What's more, the saga pioneered two of my favorite griefing strats from AVO. The Troll Bridge and the Swastar. I'll explain both. Basically, there are blocks and objects in the game which don't strictly take up one block of space even if you place them on one block of space. 
they have fucked up level geometry. So, using that fucked up level geometry, they figured out how to make inaccessible pathways by planting fence posts under half steps and stairs. I'm pretty sure this got fixed quick, but it was funny as hell while I was in the game. Meanwhile, the Swastar is an offensive symbol that's in a league of its own. See, most people wouldn't like it because it contains a diagonal swastika and thus epitomizes some of the worst bigotry in history, but most neo-Nazis or anti-Semites wouldn't like it because the Star of David is eclipsing and enveloping a symbol for anti-Semitism. It would likely piss them off too. Basically, it's an unholy hybrid engineered to provoke bad reactions from nearly everyone except the people who are in on the joke. Now I know what you're thinking. They got banned for that, right? Yeah. So that's the end of the Space Monkey griefing. Right? Take a drink. They found a way with alt accounts and came back for revenge after the Space Monkey people tried to get the last laugh. AVO turned the recovered troll bridge into a dynamite trap that was later set off, pulled a troll bridge on the flooring of an entire house along with some staircases, and pioneered their third and fourth strategies, sanding and the lights out technique. You see, some griefing plugins on servers record actions like players killing other players with swords. That way you can track down who did it and ban them accordingly. So, the crew found out that they could kill players in a more benign looking way. If they were to go to AFK players, drop sand on them, and suffocate them, it wouldn't record who went in for the kill. Take this cobblestone. Take this jukebox. Fuck this kid. We are the lights to ignite. Take this jukebox. Fuck this kid. The lights out technique involved the crew knocking down hundreds of torches in a small town or city. This not only would be difficult to detect during the middle of the day, because the daylight makes everything look fine, but it would also usher forth Dark Souls level monsters all over the place because those spawn in low light conditions, typically. And that there is rule two for AVL. Do not underestimate your opponents. Good rule for competitive environments too. And now we come to the next saga. When AVO hit Lion's Bay, they pioneered another great strategy in their griefing. They didn't really have a name for it, so I'll call it the landscaping strat. What they would do is demolish the entire building instead of ransacking it or tearing it up, and then they would plant a dirt area on the spot with trees over it. This would be effective because they began hitting servers that could roll back griefer damage with plugins. The problem this strat presented was that admins or moderators wouldn't know what areas to roll back damage on. Why? Because they wouldn't see a destroyed building. All they saw was an inconspicuous forest. But aside from that, pretty run-of-the-mill griefing here. Smashing various supply chests, sneaking out like a boss. That is, until they found the boat. Ever since they demolished the entire boat from Lions Bay Harbor, they gained a profound fascination with griefing giant boats. That's two parts of Avio's griefing ways in two episodes, once again. This had to have been one of the most popular sagas in Team Avolition's history, but it all started with one intrepid YouTube commenter trying to get Avio to grief a furry server. No one's quite sure why the guy commented this, but Avio decided to go to town. After they smashed some hidden chests, they had a moment of brilliance. When they found some storage rooms made out of bedrock, which is for the most part indestructible, they didn't give up when they figured out you could only get in there via teleport. The crew found out that there were a few ways to glitch in or out of the impenetrable rooms. With that, they pulled a heist worthy of Payday 2 characters. I wish I could think of clever shit like this. After that, they took a long underground walk and they found the fabled city. Not only did they heist the storage like usual, but they had another revelation. There were tons and tons of wooden buildings, a lava fountain, and plenty of combustible fabric. You know exactly where this is going. And they started this right under the nose of a town resident. Despite repeated attempts to kick one of the AVO members, the inferno continued. By the end of heisting the city and the hidden storage chests, AVO displaced roughly 3,500 diamonds. Actually, they're kind of wrong. I did the math and they took over 4,000 diamonds. Holy shit. 
and they were done with the Duridian server, as they came to the floating island next. AVO took this massive expanse of land high above the air, which was roughly three or four blocks deep with its soil, and decimated it down to less than one layer. I say less than one layer, because they chunked the land until you could see big stone letters reading Avolition from the ground. The best part about this is, people were watching videos of Avio's previous escapades in the fabled city as Avolition continued to go to work. Talk about a distraction. I guess that's rule one again, kids. At this point, Avio moved on again to Mine Realm. They had various antics here, including one of their biggest heists yet, stealing another giant boat, nearly smashing down a mega boat that would make a biblical figure shit himself, and Storm saying another great line. Already People on the of, although far ends of both sides are pretty stupid and wrong. Damn straight. Okay, this is where shit gets crazy right here. No, fuck this. I'm calling this the Reddit Adventures, because this is the longest saga in the lot. Avio was recognized among some Redditors, and the crew went between tons of servers listed on Reddit with their antics. They turned a brick house into a giant cobblestone brick, turned an intricate building into a giant fountain, witnessed an incident of what I call bucket lag, and nearly demolished a skyscraper. And remember the R Trees fort? Well, they found an R Trees related server and griefed that too. And at this point, they figured out a temporary exploit in which they could punch down houses at lightning speed without tools. So you know they pulled some shit before the flying chase scene. Hell, there was even a joke about griefing our trees being like curb stomping a puppy, at least according to a Reddit user or two. After that, we have Zack attack levels of attempted doxes towards Storm, a failed attempt at an IP ban, and an entire conversation about drugs while Storm Surge was tearing down a giant doobie. And if there's one thing you don't want to say to a griefing team, it's come at us, bro, but no crashes, please. At this point, we have more boat deaths, a copycat incident of troll bridges, spamming forbidden blocks all over a creative server, and one of the finest moments in their Reddit adventures. In a fresh and new server, they got a lot of flint and steel, went into their free cam mode on their hacked clients, and started lighting everything on fire. It was like the fabled city on crack. It was like Ra came down and said, The sun will fuck you. It was remarkable. And then, another fine moment for their griefing was the episode where they decided to employ the Lights Out Strat for an entire city in honor of Earth Day. They literally just walked around and their clients fucked off hundreds of torches they walked past. And yes, the strategy's namesake was that they did this to Lights Out by Rick Astley. From there on out, they subtly brought an entire town named Jericho to its knees, pretty fitting given the name, and finally, the diamond incident that I mentioned earlier. It can be summed up like this. Well, congratulations! You got yourselves extra diamonds. So what's the next part of your master plan? Trashing this server. With litter everywhere! R.I.P. Yeah, R.I.P. Yeah. There was the short Phantom Craft saga that spun off the Reddit series of videos, but it started off a little slow. After the gang fucked up the town of Proteus, Storm Surge was granted donor status on the server for basically being the Minecraft equivalent of a tourist attraction. Once he was recognized as a promoter, he trolled a dude in chat and built a giant, nearly indestructible Swastar. But after that, we had the end of the Reddit adventures with Knockcraft. The funny thing here is that Avio didn't do most of the damage at Knockcraft. When the crew got caught x-raying for diamonds, the server got broke by new plugin installations, and the admins had to reset the in-game world three times. Jesus. Now here's the big kicker. That sounded like a complex play-by-play -play of everything that went down, right? No, that was just a highlight reel. There's a lot of little things and great moments I left out when I did the notes there. This was a long-ass saga. But never fear, because we've got quite the saga coming up. I mean, the premise alone should tell you it's gonna be eventful. Ready? A server admin tries to declare war on AVO after a little bit of griefing. Hoo boy! Rule two, everyone! 
Actually, this saga would have to be a personal favorite of mine. Storm immediately was able to heist 64 diamonds right at the start, found an unprotected boat later, and then found an unprotected admin house too. At this point, you know we're in for a show. This saga really showed the power of the landscaping strat. Not only did they demolish an entire admin fort, but they got one of the dudes that built it to help them cover up the remains of the place. Rule friggin' one, baby. That may sound ridiculous, but people on the server did have other lapses of judgment to boot. What? Oh my My favorite was, God. uh... Look at his response. <laughs> what the fuck? These guys Walsh are... means from the Netherlands, right? They think Walsh is from the Netherlands. <laughs> Damn, that's like not knowing what the National Mall is. They even did something similar, but on an underwater fort. Now, now wait a minute. With the rollback stuff AVO was getting around, Surely this server had to have some actual protection plugins, right? So you couldn't just move in and, and mine whatever you wanted. They did, but it seems that they implemented it too late. I say that as Storm demolished a house, rebuilt a worse house over it, put a protective lease on it, and then watched as the original builder couldn't clean up his property. Bottom line, this was AVO at their sneakiest. And that's why this short saga stuck with me for so long. I never could figure out why I remembered the RiceLink videos so much, but maybe it had something to do with the smooth criminal levels of shit they were able to pull. Before I bring in the last saga, there's one set of videos that is actually incomplete. From what I remember, the MC Band Saga was a series of griefing efforts which targeted a flawed, universal banning system that a number of servers had implemented. While I'm fairly certain there are more episodes in the mix, I couldn't find them. I had to pick up a lot of context from here. Still, this saga contains some of the most remarkable griefing feats of AVO's time. However, that might be because half of it was in Minecraft. You see, one of the big figures behind MC Bands actually tried to scare AVO off with a legal threat. You see, this one dude thought he had something by saying how the servers were crashing as a result of DDoS. But the crew wasn't using things like data packets to do that. The crashing was happening within the server, so when someone tried to pull that with Storm, they got this. We are perfectly capable of crashing your server without any malformed packets. Um, any thoughts on that? Uh, you, you can act like an internet tough guy, and it's not going to change anything. He's got your number now. In this conversation, you can hear how Storm is just styling through the damn thing. This is why I will tell you that charisma and raw intellect are two different things. Though, Storm does seem to have both. The funny thing is that this backfired in a way that none of them would have expected. While Storm Surge wasn't denying service by throwing around data packets, someone else ended up doing that. Hell, the gang started working with a new way to go trolling because of the bad weather a server was having, so to speak. But more on that later. This is the bizarre double-edged sword that was AVO's community. On one hand, you could have increased player traffic on servers and pals to work with because of Avalition's griefing. But do something that's off, and you could get a real mess on your hands. Weird to think that this dynamic came from a whole bunch of griefers, but you'll probably see why later. Anyways, we had a tactical nuke's worth of dynamite being dropped in one server, an incident involving obsidian being littered everywhere, cause you know that stuff is hard to get rid of, and the most diabolical shit to ever surface from this saga. Watch this. Yeah, he literally just overwrote countless signs to encourage griefing. Rule fucking one. But no, 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 no. It doesn't stop there. Guess what him and his boys also figured out? How to do this. He crashed the server with one single bit of text. If you needed more proof about Minecraft having spaghetti code, this is it. But hey, what did AVO do when they had bad weather in one server? Well, I'll tell you. They had a night on the town in the style of entertainment. If you thought spamming balls of steel and lol at Ventrilo was funny, get a load of how they used pendulum music. Do you want to know what I think about that? Storm, I have an idea. Would you like to hear my opinion? Storm. Okay, <laughs> It's so bad. Wait for Okay, people, we're almost done with the sagas. Let's go to the Hunger Games shenanigans, where I can ask you a question. What happens when you somehow manage to give griefers admin powers on a server? 
You get carpet bombing, getting voided, burning people, SPIDERS, starting a strip club featuring the resident perv, and destroying the mid-round lobby. That is, when they weren't turning people into furnaces. My god. The script kiddies and aimbotters of the future had nothing on this shit. This puts every tryhard hacker to ever walk into a competitive gaming to shame. As if those schmoes didn't already look weak. Actually, this is a good time to introduce another AVO strat I call the shit brick. Whenever AVO got their hands on admin powers, and this happened a few times, they figured out how to use building plugins to turn normal blocks into freakish amalgamations of color. Look at this. This is just nasty. And to add insult to injury, they started this off by calling themselves Team Bad Dragon under the guise of a legit team. If you're worried that it ends there, I forgot to tell you something. While the sagas are done, I even told you about the many one-off episodes. I could go on and on with these shorts, but I'm gonna tell you what my top five episodes would be between the sagas. Chaos Craft. At the time, it was the self-proclaimed most offensive and destructive video they had. Even then, I don't remember a swa star in this episode, so I'd find that debatable. Anyways, this episode used a massive versatility of griefing methods, and it did have a reason to be called offensive. You see, the first impression they got of the server was that the place was arranging a church session with everyone online. Yeah, a church in Minecraft. So naturally, Team AVO got op admin powers, just like in the Hunger Games saga, and eventually turned the blessed Minecraft server into hell on earth. Also, I think this was the first time I remember seeing the shit brick technique. Fakuk Minecraft. If you thought it was insane that they got admin powers for griefing twice, they did it a third time too. Now this was a hell of an episode. Not only did they call a biblical plague's worth of lightning down upon every NPC in the server, but they dunked on the players too. Hard. They used world edits and server-wide teleports to put them through a lot of shit. They took the offensiveness and destructive power of Chaos Craft and said, Nah, hold my beer. Tree griefing. This one probably deserves a bit of an explanation more than the other one-off episodes, so let me explain. Avio came to a creative building server and began chunking the entire world apart with their hacks. The problem is, people managed to roll the damage back since they could track who was doing it. What's more, it took a long time to do serious damage with this method. So, they readjusted their plan to focus on sweeping the surface of the world instead, and they brought out the trees. You see, when they sprouted trees, plugins only found out who put down the sapling. The plugins would act like the server made the trees, because tree growth is an in-game feature. So what Avolition did with that is they sprouted shit tons of trees and left hundreds of logs and leaves scattered through the empty spaces of the buildings. Now, admins tried to get rid of all that excess, using server commands, but some of the houses were made of logs. Avio forced the server to manually clean this shit up in a way that couldn't easily be rolled back. I'm not gonna lie, I get a little too much satisfaction out of this. I've always seen Minecraft players cut down the trunks of trees, but leave the canopies intact and not replant the forests. So, I'm sitting here like... <laughs> the update. The goddamn update. That's all I can call this video. This was one of the most legendary things I ever did see from Avolition. Not only did Storm call out people for failed DDoSing Avolition's vent servers and fail doxing him, but he unveiled two massive jabs at people. One at their Reddit detractors, and one at another universal banning system. I mean, look at this when people tried to send the AVO website down the shitter. I think it's hilarious that a site that thinks so highly of themselves would resort to a denial-of-service attack because their little house burned down in a computer game. I mean, honestly, I know people who used to do things like that, and then their balls dropped. Talking shit in the face of immature rage. My hero. And you thought him griefing MC Bant's protected servers was bad. You thought AVO leading those guys to ban innocents en masse and get cluttered up with appeals was bad. Then get a load of the Low Orbit MC Admin Cannon. They figured out how to get into the MC admin system and then ban out the server's admins from their own servers. They even left fake usernames of who banned them and fake reasons for the bans. Hell, Deridian was one of them. The people figured out fast, but it's remarkable how AVO even figured out how to do this. Now you're probably thinking, how could you possibly top that? I mean, that's all just stuff on the computer. Well... I think this was back in the Reddit saga, but there was once a Reddit party that was actually close to where Storm Surge lived at the time. So, he went there, offered a CD to play for the DJ, 
and what happened mid-song during the party was fantastic. You see, there were some shenanigans where AVO had a guy that would sing over songs from time to time. And, in the middle of the party, people heard this guy's melodious chords over the speakers. Unknown Gamer, take it away. Give it up for Team AVO. They are the best people around. They deserve all the ice cream in the world. So why don't you give it to them? This happened apparently. And even though the song didn't get to this part, this deal brought me to another great quote that stuck with me for years. But read it because AVO's better, they have so much more talent. But the most profound thing I noticed with AVO through all of this was, they actually seemed kind of cool. Yeah, for all the shit they did, they did it with such finesse, and they had such a personal touch to the whole deal. You know the internet rule of do not forgive and do not forget? Well, Team Avalition didn't get that memo. Throughout their griefing, they showed that their crew had an odd code of honor and morality for what they did. You know Crazy PS3 Gamer from Space Monkey? He was one of the guys that got grieved, and yet he tagged along for the ride with the Doridian Saga. Remember Del the NG from Space Monkey, the one who had his Bowser's Castle Tower? He tagged along with Nhouse.net in the Reddit saga. You can even figure out how to get a mumble you're freaking engineering, like I don't want to- <laughs> <laughs> Remember Doridian getting banned off his own server? He came by to talk with the crew once, and actually approved of AVO during the Reddit adventures. That's right. Apparently, the crew exploiting Doridian's ban systems helped him fix things up, and Redditors started shit with Doridian. They even had a laugh about the time where they were at odds with each other, Storm tried to get a ban appeal, and he got this response from Doridian. And the plot thickens from there. During their LSS video, they even gave people an idea of what it took to be griefed by their team. So if you really want to be bothered by Team AVO, you have to do two things. First of all, you have to act stupid, and second, you have to act like you're important. They didn't just go after anyone. And sometimes, they even offered a chance to back off from a server. I want everybody who's a moderator in this channel to say that Team AVO deserves ice cream, and we will go yeah, to another server. Happen. All we said was that if the moderators, or the admin, or whatever, of the nerd servers says that Team AVO deserves ice cream, we'll move on to a completely different server because we will have lost all interest in you. And if you don't believe me, look back in the past at the other times we've done this, and see that we have always kept our word. No one deserves ice cream? No one. That's... That's not good, I don't approve of this. Now this would look kind of shitty if you follow the mentality of don't negotiate with terrorists, but it can't be said they didn't try to end things. And actually, this is pretty clever because if people aren't prideful about their Minecraft server, and they're pretty chill, just like them, then they could probably say that they deserve ice cream no problem. So really, they're just picking the hotheads out from the crowd. It's brilliant. And to be honest, their strange code of conduct was one thing that I liked about their Minecraft antics. If they had beef, and they usually had a reason to have beef, they styled on people and made a show out of it. They showed the world how to avoid trouble in this game. If you acted decent, and you were smart about your server, rest assured you'd be fine with AVO. After a while though, things changed. Minecraft and its servers were shaping up and eliminating the ways AVO could exploit it. The game evolved over the years. AVO tried to do rust antics and that sort of thing, but their efforts slowly dwindled and dwindled into a perpetual slog. It, it just wasn't the same. I guess there just aren't enough games for them to fuck with in the same way they could do so for Minecraft. Nowadays Storm does things like Jeep plays and PUBG, but it's kind of basic compared to what they used to do. There's not a lot to really show off here. It's kind of a shame. I'm waiting for a big break in which they could pull Acts of Cunning and make people fix a flawed game. Until then though, it looks like things are gonna get quiet. But you know what? Even though times have changed, and I've grown up, I learned a lot from going back and seeing these videos. Some things didn't age or preserve as well as others, but the griefing of AVO was one hell of a trip, and I'm glad I had it. And if you're seeing this, Krisk, Warchamp, Unknown Gamer, Storm Surge, the whole crew, I personally think y'all deserve some ice cream. Our channel, like even long after we're done doing this stuff on Minecraft, Hey, that channel is still going to be there, and the videos are still going to be the most popular. Oh no, my capture for out. ages. <laughs>